Attacking small business to justify the cash ban. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, I'm Florian Heiser and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my morning stein of coffee and I thought we'd look at this article from the ABC because frankly, it's a little annoying. It's It really, really feels like a propaganda piece designed to you know, win support for this cash ban because of these dodgy small businesses, you know, and their huge tax avoidance strategies. That's what this feels like. It feels like a lot of BS, to be quite honest. So let's have a look. Let's have a look what Peter's written here. So tax cheats running small businesses continue to gouge billions of dollars from the economy by putting in dodgy expense claims while demanding cash in hand tracks transactions coming from someone who works for the ABC, a huge sinkhole of tax funding. Okay, come on, you probably never run a business in your life. Never run a business in your life. I'm gonna. I, I can't be bothered looking him up. The Australian Taxation Office says while almost 90% of small businesses pay income tax voluntarily. Figures from 2015, 2016, so that's a while ago, show 7.1 billion went into the black economy through straight out tax evasion and use of software that can hide transactions. Software that can hide transactions. Notice how it's all they're talking about is just dodgy books. Someone doing the dodgy books, okay? And this stuff will happen no matter what you implement. No matter what you implement, no matter what processes you have in place, people will still try to dodgy the books one way or another. I mean, come on. This this really feels like they're building up an, a, a case against small businesses to go, oh, those, those small businesses, we need to get rid of cash to, to stop the black economy. I mean, come on, guys. ATO Deputy Commissioner Deborah Jenkins told the world today that businesses and consumers exploited the cash economy for a cheaper deal meant less revenue for critical infrastructure spending like roads, bridges, and schools. Yes, it's those small businesses and their tiny $7.1 billion that's destroying all of these things. How about we cut we cut some of the foreign aid that Australia is giving to countries that, that uh, uh, you know, ha, ha, I've got 500 billion right now. We, you know, the, it's being provided to all the little Pacific Island nations that treat us like crap. How about we take some of that, okay, and reduce tax, re reduce the incentives for people to do this type of stuff. I mean, come on. And, and remember, small businesses, we're all working for the ATO. We're all your little GST accountants and little serfs collecting your tax dollars that way. We don't get paid for that. Do we? No, not at all. And it takes a lot of time to do it. Or you have to pay for software that helps you do it. Okay. There are those who are trying really hard to do the right thing. Honest businesses who just make simple errors. But you're right. There's a bunch of people who think it's okay to take cash jobs and not report it, Miss Jenkins said. I mean, people have said, oh, I'm just, I'm biased. I'm just looking out for myself. I'm in the construction industry and I've taken cash jobs. I never have. I can't. I'm an architect, guys. Who's going to pay an architect cash? Seriously. I'll, I'll go to, a, you know, I'm working for a, a tier two builder. And yeah, give me that, that, you know, $80,000 for that job. Give me that in cash, guys, because I want to run it under the table. Yeah, no. Okay, shit like that doesn't happen. Okay, I'm not, I'm not part of the Labor Party accepting donations from business people in Aldi bags. Okay, no. Doesn't happen in small business. Not what they're painting here. Maybe they should look at some of the political corruption, political donations. Or even just all the local councils with the stuff going on. But that was a good... Uh, it's good to see, you know, that the Aldi bags are good quality. So when you're going to make your illegal contribution to political parties, it's robust enough to ha house all of your hundreds of dollars of notes. But that's, that's completely off topic, sorry. If you're saying to the tradie, hey, do this for a bit cheaper for cash, you are actually participating in the black economy. Bum, bum, bum. The eight or okay or they here's another argument here's another reason why the tradie might do it cheaper for cash often when you send invoices you can have discounts for people if they pay promptly if they pay early because in the construction game and here's something that a lot of people don't realize it can be a real pain getting paid it can be 30 day terms if you're lucky 60 day terms or even i've had friends that some builders have 120 day terms 
And if you don't know what that means, that means like say I send an invoice to such and such builder. And what they'll do is they'll say 30 days after the end of the month. So say I send it on the first of the month, I'll send them my two week invoice. They will pay me 30 days after the end of that month. Sometimes even 60 days, sometimes 90, sometimes 120 days. That's the game. And what happens if you say, no, I'm not working for that? Well, then you lose that work. You lose that work. So if there's someone coming up to them, I'll pay you cash, pay you up front. That is a sign that they've got the money, number one, because a lot of people will get you to build work and not pay you. They may not have the money. There's that dodginess as well. And you don't need to wait. Sometimes it's cheaper to have that money in your hand to pay for your materials. So you don't need to um, get it on credit or go into cash advance. So yeah, it's not just people trying to avoid GST. There's a whole other side to running a business. But if all you've ever done is work for the ATO or all you've ever done is written articles from the ABC, you've probably never experienced those challenges. So that's why this whole piece here, it feels like it's being framed to get all the masses you know, in support of this cash ban. Because you know what the next step is. The next step is negative interest rates. That's what's coming. Because they need to drop it or else they can't stimulate the economy anymore. The latest ATO analysis shows a small business tax gap of 12.5% or 11.1 billion from small businesses either avoiding or accidentally misstating their tax liabilities with 7.1 billion lost to the black economy. Okay, you're never going to have a completely perfect system. Whenever you have any interventions into a market, there's going to be a dead weight loss. That's just what happens, okay? It's it's unavoidable. I know these people like to like to imagine that they can control everything like a finely tuned system. They can pull their little levers and it'll all work perfectly. So many boots will be, be made for the proletariat every quarter, and you know you'll go without without shoes. But we we're producing so many boots, you know. So sorry, I'm thinking too much like 1984 at the moment. So I'm talking about boots. Why the hell am I talking about boots? I need a coffee. So the tax gap is a theoretical estimate of what the ATO expects to collect and what was actually collected in a given year. So it means absolutely nothing. It's a theoretical estimate. Okay, well, what about the economy? When's this looking at? What, what year? Okay, well, are they referring to 2015, 2016? Could that be it? That was when you had the construction boom. Anyway, as part of its fight back, the eight, well, actually one thing I know, depending on the skies of your business, they, they want you to pay your taxes in advance. And that can really screw you if you had a good year and then you had a terrible year. Oh, but you'll get it back at the end, Florian. Yeah, that's not how cash flow works, guys. It's not how cash flow works. It's a different world when you're running a small business to when you're living on a paycheck. It is a completely different world. Some of the stresses and challenges that you encounter running a small business. And I know there are a lot of tradies watching my channel that can relate to that, that run their own small business and I'm sure have just experienced the challenges of keeping the cash flow going or keeping enough work coming in to keeping the boys busy. And nothing is worse when you're out there. And I, I still remember this. I was out there really hard, working hard to get work in to keep the guys busy. And I came, you know, came and said, guys, I've won this, this job. You know, we, 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 it's a mining building. And we may need to do some structural drafting as well, just to help them out to win the job. And, and you know, they were putting up their nose going, I don't want to do that. I was ready to fire the little bastards right there on the spot. Because I had worked my ass off to bring that job in. And they were too good for it. Anyway, back to this. Enough of my stories of, uh, of learning not to employ uh, millennials. Even though I technically... I'm on the cusp of being a millennial. That's, that's actually a discussion I had with John Adams in the car. We were, were discussing if we were millennials or not. Uh, I think we, you know, sadly, I think we are in some regards. Depend, you know, 80, 81. What do you reckon? Around then, 83? Kind of. We're kind of halfway between. Halfway between. Anyway, back to this. As part of its fight back, the ATO is expanding its cross-referencing tool to detect red flags and will deploy strike teams to identify tax cheats. Cross-referencing tools, where have we heard that before? Where's that gone tremendously wrong? It's gone wrong in the robo-debt. The robo-debt. 
This is why they want you all to go cashless. It's so they can use their cross-referencing software to detect any activity you do so they can just tax you to hell. That's why. And, you know, robo-debt, there's been a lot of issues with that. It hasn't been perfect. That's the thing. You need to understand, oh, but fine, there's some people cheating it. Sure they are. Sure, I accept that. But you need to understand when you have these automated systems in place, there is a risk that it can go harm the innocent or it can cause tremendous damage. So you need to balance up. Do you accept a little bit of uh, loss or to avoid the risk? Or do you, just go, do you want to capture that loss and then pay the risk? That's, the, that's what you need to think. That's what people need to keep in their mind. Because once you have these automated systems in there, that's kind of worrying. So receipt scams. Ms. Jenkins said the ATO was also cracking down on the use of sales suppression software that disguised the transactions within a company's records. If you're a cafe, the software might turn a very expensive steak into a ball of fries, she said. Okay. This is some really sophisticated software out there that is helping people avoid paying the right amount of tax. But whether it's, it is cashless or whether it is the use of platforms or apps, it means there is really a trace of your transactions. We use merchant data and other sources of information to identify where things just don't look right. And then we go and have a chat with them and say, hey, can you explain this? I'm sure it's just that pleasant for everyone there. Because remember, it's the tax department's money. It's not yours. It's not like you worked for it. Not at all. More and more I read about this stuff, the more I'm leaning towards the taxation is theft. Just the more. Ms. Jenkins said, yeah, just think, think about it here. If you had a really good year and, you, you know, you had to pay a, for, a fortune in tax and then the next year you had a really bad year, what would happen? Because you paid that tax, it's gone. You don't have that money you can depend on. But don't worry, then you can get government support and be treated like crap by the, uh, you know, Centrelink and the Human Services Department. Treated like a thief. Don't worry, that, that's, that's what you're paying your taxes for, that privilege. Ms. Jenkins said the ATO was expanding its use of sophisticated anal analytical tools to detect omitted income and black economy behavior. The ATO will also step up its enforcement with highly visible mobile strike teams after almost 10,000 businesses were visited last year. Ms. Jenkins said small businesses need to understand their tax obligations or face significant penalties. How about, here's another idea. How, that's a good idea. You can get your Gestapo tax people knocking on everyone's doors. How about we simplify the hell out of our tax system to reduce the over, overly complex, the complexity of it? It's overly complex at the moment. How about we simplify it before doing all this crap? 10,000 business visits. How much money would that cost? How much would that cost? I'd like to see the ATO budget for that. How about we, we reduce ATO's capacity and simplify our system? How about, here's one, here's one. Would you be willing to go, would you be willing to go cashless if, if we had a flat 2% or 1% transaction tax and nothing else, ATO ceased to exist? That was it. What do you reckon? Of every transaction, every banking transaction, 1% went to, I don't know, the government to, to waste, but you got rid of the ATO. Let me, let me know what you think about that idea in the comments. So come and talk to us. We're not really scary, I promise. She said, oh boy. Yeah. She rejects claims from small business that the tax office is a bully. Well, let's have a look at another example. Let's look at big business, okay? And this is from 2016 or 2017, but um, it's looking at certain large companies here that were offshoring, offshoring and moving profits around. So IBM, uh, Schindler Electric, Atlantean, and Canon were among the technology companies that avoided paying tax in 2016 despite generating taxable income. The Australian Taxation Office released its latest transaction report Oh, sorry, transparency report. I'll zoom in so I can see it with my, my dodgy eyes. Revealing the tax bills of more than 2,000 big companies operating in Australia. The list covers some 1693 Australian public and foreign-owned companies 
with incomes of 100 million or more as well as 350 australian owned resident private companies with an income of more than 200 million more than 700 of these companies paid no tax in australia in 2016. now are they all doing it that badly or are they shifting the money are they shifting the money so we'll see here what i've got to do i'll move over here so we can see it all sorry guys this is what happens when the articles resize there we go the report includes many, many well-known IT companies operating in Australia, including vendors, solutions, and distributors. So that those that did not pay tax despite generating profit can expect to attract the greatest scrutiny. These companies included IBM, Australia and New Zealand, which generated a revenue of $3.6 billion and had $23.4 million in ta of taxable income. This week, the Australian National Audit Office revealed that IBM had earned the most money in federal government IT contracts of any technology supplier at $2.1 billion since 2012-2013. Australian-born software developer, developer Atlantian, which turned over revenue of $600 million and a taxable income of $87.4 million. Schindler, Schindler Electric, Australia Holdings, which has a taxable income of $72.4 million on a $1.4 billion in revenue. Canon Australia reported revenues of 783 and 36 million in taxable. And we've got Perth based ASG Group, revenue 189, 15.7 taxable. Citrix, 307, 9.8. And Unisys, 207.1 and 1.5. Wow, that's. Is that really all their taxable income? What does it tell you? ATO Deputy Commissioner Jeremy Hershoff said, I buggered that one up, sorry, mate, said most large companies were paying the right tax amounts and do so voluntary. According to the tax office, not paying tax did not necessarily indicate wrongdoing. In any given year, many major companies make losses, both for tax purposes as well as accounting purposes. In the last financial year, alone we issued more than four billion in amended assessments relating to prior years to public groups and multinationals uh, and we have already issued a further one billion in amended assessments this financial year these amounts do not reflect are not reflected in the corporate tax transparency data he said the government has launched a number of initiatives to crack down on tax dodgers including the tax avoidance task force and the introduction of new laws including the multinational anti-avoidance law and the diverted profits tax and country by country reporting he said the ato expects to begin to see the impact of the maal in 2016 2017 data as companies restructured to comply with the requirements of the new law so that is what's been put in place to deal with a lot of the foreign companies that are offshoring businesses and this one here i wanted to talk about is apple Apple, which reports revenue of $7.5 billion, paid $117.8 million based on a taxable income of $393 million. The iPhone maker's margin of taxable income to revenue was just 5%. So there are a lot of companies that we are aware of that are using tax or diverting profits and avoidance schemes to offshore their money. We still see it when you subscribe to something. So I'm questionable about this small business being the big concern this feels like it's designed to get popular support for going cashless and then heading down towards negative interest rates and more government control over your personal lives guys let me know what you think am i clutching too hard and, and generating conspiracy theories or am i just seeing some you know subtle pieces falling into place anyway thanks for watching like share and subscribe and i'll see you all later take care